Web3 technologies like blockchains and decentralized identities offer a new way to give users control over the internet and make it safer. However, adoption of Web3 is still low and people struggle to understand and interact with these tools. The rise of powerful and accessible AI has brought with it new risk, including misinformation, scams, fraud, breaches of privacy, and threats to jobs. Sweet Papa Technologies aims to solve this problem by accelerating adoption of Web3 and making AI both safer and more accessible. The Fofo Network is our Web3-based ecosystem that provides the backbone for everything we need in Web3. In this demo, we will showcase core features of the Fofo Network, including creating a wallet in DID, reviewing content hashes, and exploring stable diffusion. What we have is a website that's using the Fofo SDK to essentially allow us to use some of the Web3 technologies and, and features. First thing we're going to run through is creating a wallet. So if we hit create new wallet, uh, we're able to specify a wallet name and password. This information is going to be what's used to open our wallet in the future and our wallet will store very important things like credentials. So let's go ahead and try to create one called Fofo Wallet. And if I try to create this wallet, what we'll get is actually an error. It's going to tell me that this wallet already exists. Uh, and that's because wallet names have to be unique. So we'll go ahead and go with a new wallet name and try again. And we'll be able to move forward. So for my digital ID, I can specify a display name if I want, or I can leave all of this information blank. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a display name. And I'm gonna give it a first name and last name. Yeah, and then the system is going to go ahead and create a credential for me and then it's going to assign this to my wallet. What's really nice about these credentials is that the only thing that's publicly available is the unique ID for the credential. And that unique ID is your DID, your decentralized identifier. When we click on view, we can see that uh, the DID has our display name, our first name and last name associated with it, and then a public key, which is associated with the DID as well. Uh, the public key would be used to verify content created by this DID. If we click show sensitive information, we'll be able to see the private key and information like that. If you wanted to back up this credential, you could click download ID, and then you would have an encrypted backup of the credential that you could use to restore back to your wallet. We also have the ability to create other credentials, and we can actually make as many as we want. Additionally, there's different types of credentials that can be created. Right now, we're creating the standard anonymous credential, which anybody can create. However, imagine if there are different types of credentials that are issued by other organizations and these credentials have levels of verification required to obtain them. This could be you know, credentials that are issued by the government or this could be credentials issued by the FOFO network which require you to validate an email address or things like that so that when you're posting on the internet uh, there are ways to verify who you are. One of the things we're going to do now, though, is we're going to create a hashed post. And what I mean by that is we're going to take some text and we're going to get a hash of that text and save it to the blockchain. This would be similar to like if we were posting something on a social media website. What I did just now is I selected one of my dids that I have available in my wallet. And now I'm going to write a sentence like I like waffles or Let's go, I love waffles and hit create post. A hash of this sentence was taken and then saved to the blockchain. This happens basically immediately, but what we have our system set up to do right now is wait until the transaction has been fully confirmed and locked in. And that takes a, a few seconds or so. So you'll see down here that we have our uh, transaction. There's a transaction ID, and then there's the hash information, and then there's the did 
that created this content. What I can do now is I can take this uh, content hash and I can try to validate what the original um, uh, post was. So I believe it was, I love waffles. So if I run validation, you'll see that it matches. If I were to say, I love waffles a lot, that does not work. It has to be exactly, I love waffles. And you'll see that if I change casing, that also breaks it. So casing has to also be the same. So this is very useful for making sure that information that's posted online is actually, uh, you know, what we expect it to be. And we would also then be able to use the system to verify where that information actually came from. Other things that we're able to do though, is we can take hashes of images as well. We have the ability to take a hash of an image and compare it to another image and verify that we're looking at the same exact image. However, if we want to, we can also use the hash of images to compare them with like images. And this is perceptual hashing. So we could also compare it to something that's grayscaled. And you'll see it matches and, and things like that. But let's go ahead and see what it looks like using some of these tools in a, a, a more real world website. What I have right here is a, a small app that I made myself for this proof of concept. Uh, and it uses stable diffusion to convert text to images. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to sign in with my ID. I believe it was Fofo Wallet 1234 I'll type in my password. Okay, I've got my wallet and then I've got my different dids that I can select. So I'll go ahead and select my dids. And again, right now we're using the Fofo SDK or the Fofo Network SDK to um, uh, essentially interact with the Fofo Network and, and use all of these accounts and information and whatnot. And let's go ahead and generate a new image. Let's say an astronaut riding a horse under the ocean. Wait, generate image, and it'll take a few moments to actually produce this, but what's gonna end up happening is the image once done will be hashed, and that hash will be saved to the Fofo network blockchain. And what will be great about that is that information will all be associated with my did. Uh, and therefore people will be able to know that uh, that did created this image. This would be particularly useful for artists. Uh, if you have a Fofo credential did that is verified and you, you're just saying you're this particular artist, you can make sure that all of your work is associated with your did. Um, our image is done. It's not quite under the ocean, but <laughs> that'll definitely work. Um, if we scroll down though, what we'll see is that there's the hash uh, of the image and then we'll see this is the did that created it. And then this right here is the uh, transaction ID. I could copy this transaction ID, go back to my demo app and go to search transactions. And if I search for it, you'll see it shows up here. So hopefully you're seeing that these sort of uh, data points are very useful for tracking, verifying, and owning uh, various assets and data on the internet. By giving users control over their data, and enabling anonymous use with verification, we can create robust systems to empower and protect users in the face of these new challenges. Join our conversation at projectmydata.org to help make Web3 a reality.